Hello again, it's me, James Alderson. Remember me from the first episode with the Swiss cottage and the demolition thing and, the, no? Okay, well, here I am in, I guess, the second episode of this series of vlogs, video blogs that all the kids are doing, because I'm hip and trendy too, shut it. I'm putting these together to remind everybody about the history and celebrate the history of Waterlooville. Because Waterlooville is 200 years old this year. 200 years old! That's older than Bruce Forsyth and Terry Wogan put together, probably. Now, I am here in what used to be miles and miles of wheat fields. But obviously in the background here, you can see they're building hundreds and hundreds of homes. Wonderful. This area was renowned mills all around here in Denmead and Waterlooville and this area was actually known as Wheat Lane End because this is where the lane of wheat fields ended and eventually over time probably because of the Pompey accent it became known as Wheat Lane End. Wheat Lane End! Oi oi! Anyway, <clears throat> that's where I am today. Wheat Lane End Farmhouse. Here it is. And I'm sure many of you have passed this a couple of times a day lived around here and not even thought about it but this farmhouse is probably 250 300 years old maybe even older with a lovely little tide cottage connected to it it's very hard to find out the full history of this because it's recently been bought by developers <laughs> what a trend we're setting here and guess what they want to knock it down but don't panic don't start a petition because weirdly the council were probably drunk or having a Christmas party and said, no, you can't knock this down. You've got to look after it and refurbish it. So, of course, they're sulking, throwing their toys out of the pram and they're probably in a yacht in Marbella right now waiting for this just to crumble to the ground or maybe accidentally catch fire. Anyway, here I am at Wake Lane End. Wonderful, isn't it? lovely. It's very hard to identify some of the historic buildings in the area and indeed around the whole country because a lot of them have been pebble dashed or rendered, repointed, had new extensions on, replaced with windows and roofs and doors. But here you can tell quite clearly a lovely old building. But come closer and I'll show you exactly where you can tell exactly how old it is. I'm going to stand on this little sleepy little village lane in the bus lane, because I am a size one to shut in. And whilst I'm crossing this, oh no, whilst I'm going to cross this lane, have a little guess as to how many people lived in Waterloo Bell in 1950. I could be here for 20 minutes. Have you guessed yet? 2,000 people. Just 2,000 people. That's more than the population of Denmead at the moment. Now guess how many people live in Waterlooville now? 65,000. 65,000. Well done, town planners. Go you. You're doing well. Isn't it amazing how little villages like Meon Stoke and Rollins Castle haven't developed to that sort of size today? You could maybe think that some influential MPs live in those villages. But I'd just be guessing, of course. Right. Here we go. Look behind me. Look at all these higgledy-piggledy stables and barns. It's like something out of The Hobbit, isn't it? Or Lord of the Rings. Wonderful. Ancient little buildings. And that's what I said in the first ever episode. Of course, if you raise your eye line above the ground floor and above the grotty empty units and charity shops and look up to the roofs, you'll see the stunning architecture of some of the lovely old buildings that are 200 or nearly 200 years old. But something sad has happened to this building here. Um, and it's been signed over to developers and let's hope they do look after it. But something even weirder has happened to this building. Last year, it's came up for sale and a guy bought it. And get this, he's living in it. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Not only that, but look, doing it up. It's strange, I think it's quite freaky. I don't think it's gonna catch on. Think of the money you'd make if you converted this into a 10-story block of flats. Anyway, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a lovely thing this as the first building you reached. A lovely farmhouse surrounded by wheat fields when you were travelling over from the little villages of Whitley and Purbrook down this sleepy lane. Two villages of course that retain their little villagey identity to this day. These buildings opposite weren't built until the 1930s. This was all wheat fields across here 
and then the film stopped, of course, in the 1850s when the Wellington pub was built. So this farmhouse really is an important building and one of the first buildings you would have reached when you came to the area. Now I'll be tweeting these videos in the future so you can find me on Comedy James on Twitter. I'll be sharing it on Facebook pages like about Waterlooville and I'll probably even be emailing them to the council for them to enjoy whilst they sip their glass of wine in their lunch hour. Thanks ever so much for your support on these videos. Let's hope we can keep the history of the town alive. Happy 200th anniversary, Waterlooville. Boom!